Well, good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're from. Welcome to At Your Side Virtually. I'm Angela Wolf, and I've got Jerry waiting in the back room. I'm looking at all the samples real quick. He's popping in here in just a second with us. So we have a great show for you today. So if you've never been here before, first off, I'm a brand ambassador for Brother. Jerry's a brother educator, and we he, I should say he, has a great tutorial because I cannot wait to learn this. So pop in, say hi. We are live on Brother Sews, Brother YouTube, Facebook, and Sewing sewing and Crafting page. So Jerry, are you ready for me? Hey. Oh my gosh, I am so ready. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, we are doing great, and I see the crowd is growing. Uh, the Wolfpack's popping in. We've got Christopher from South America today. So... Um, yeah. So Jerry, how how are things going? Your quilts are gorgeous behind you, by the way. Oh no. Jerry, don't freeze on me. <laughs> Sorry, my my connection is really I don't know why. <laughs> we'll keep it going though. We're gonna plow through. Yay. So uh, for those of you that don't know, Jerry is a awesome quilter, award winner. So Jerry, just tell th some of People coming in have never met you before. So you're a brother educator. Just tell them just a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Hi. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jerry Granada. I am a brother educator. I live in Palm Springs. That'd be Palm Springs, California. Jerry's internet has been like acting a little weird today. So we're hoping that we uh, give him a second to pop back in here. Because I can tell you this. I will not be able to show you quilting with rulers. That is Jerry's specialty. And as soon as I see him moving around in the lobby, here we go. Gremlins on. It's not Friday. Gremlins on Thursday. Is that what it is? <laughs> so Jerry will uh, pop back in here. So well, there know. you are. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. I guess this is how it's going to be. So we'll just we'll just plow through and see what happens. Anyway, I am from Palm Springs. Um, I know this is a new virtual world and we're all getting used to this. So please forgive me if my internet drops. Um, it, it, we'll we'll just plow through, we'll get through it, and it'll be awesome. I've got a lot to show you. Um, I have been a brother educator for a few years now. Uh, I've worked for other manufacturers as well. So if you have any questions about any other manufacturers and how they relate to brother, I'm your person because I can tell you uh, how how it works on the brother machine. So awesome. So Jerry, today, so when you were on here about a month ago with Barbara, you had the best tutorial ever and we could have gone on for hours and then everyone was like when is jerry coming back i want to see that quilting with rulers so that's what we are offering today i'm so excited to learn this by the way i actually have quite a few rulers i've just never really mastered the whole technique and yeah. what i learned from you last time and any of you that missed that show you can go back to brother so's uh, facebook or youtube page and replay that so that's lesson number one on free motion this is lesson number two from jerry <laughs> and what I'll do is for those of you who were here before, I'm going to do just a quick run through of what I went through before, and then we'll get into the ruler part because um, free motion can take, you know, it, it can take some time and it's, I offer an eight hour class. So I'm just giving you a little tease. Um, there's lots of videos, lots of things that you can do. Um, and as I always say, my technique is just one technique. It's a technique. It's not the technique. So you have to find the one that's right for you. I know it can be a scary world to jump into, but our machines make it very, very easy. I think easier, um, especially with the width that we have with the XP. So um, what I do is kind of switch over. Let's head over to the machine and I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about what we talked about before and then we'll move on to the ruler section. Awesome, that sounds fantastic. So Jerry's going to take us to his machine. So uh, in case you don't know, he's using the Luminaire XP2. Uh, if you have the Luminaire XP1 upgrade, uh, that would work too. But uh, go ahead, Jerry. You're all on there. Awesome. Yeah, I'm using the XP1 with the upgrade, actually. So Oh, correct. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. If you have not gotten the upgrade, please get it. I'm just saying. If you're an XP1 owner... I'll finish the second part of the sentence for you, Jerry. <laughs> for those of you popping in, the internet is not behaving in his neck of the woods today. So um, as soon as I hear you back. Yeah. It's gonna be a techie day. All right, go ahead, Jerry. <laughs> the gremlins are active today. <laughs> okay, so I'm using, I've got my machine threaded with, um, actually this is Brothers Pace Setter Thread. Um, it's an embroidery thread. Oh my gosh, can you use embroidery thread? Absolutely, you can use embroidery thread. 
Um, you can use anything that your machine will accept to quilt. I have used, I love Brother Machines because they're so easy to use. And for me, they take every thread that I throw at it. Metallics, monofilaments, cotton, polyesters, you know, brush polys. I've tried them all and they all work beautifully in free motion. It's all just a matter of what you want the final project to look like. Um, if, you, if you're doing a Christmas one, metallics would be really great. Um, if you're doing like a homespun quilt, maybe using cottons would be great uh, to, to free motion with. But, you know, I'm, I'm the rule breaker guy. So if, you, if you're coming at me with, well, you've made a cotton quilt, you have to use cotton thread. Or, no, you don't. <laughs> to, to quilt with. Use whatever you want to use to give your project the final look that you want. How will you know that? You have to do a test. You'll hear me. You've heard me said it before. I'll say it again till I'm in my grave but do a test, 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 test as often as you can, and you'll find exactly what it is um, that's either uh, going right or not, maybe not going so right. So um, let's go ahead and look at uh, my setup. Again, I have this threaded with a poly thread. I've got my O foot. This is a free motion foot, which I love because there is so much visual around the needle and around the area that I'm quilting. I absolutely love it. So let me check in with you, Angela. Am I still, am I still? Uh, you are okay. great. We can see you. We can hear you. And okay. um, actually, awesome. I'm just going to slide you over here. There we go. We'll just keep on a going then. All right. So let me move my fabric here, my little quilt sandwich, and show you what I got going here. What is this? <laughs> For uh, free motion success, um, I suggest that if you do not have a, well, the, the ultimate thing is to have a table that you could drop your machine into. I understand that, that they can be pricey and some people are on a budget. I get that. So what you can do, Brother has a wonderful um, table, an extension table for their machines. And let me just kind of pull back here a little bit and I'll show you how large. I think we just lost Jerry there for a sec. He'll come back. It's always like if we're moving a lot. So just be patient with the gremlins today. By the way, that does look nice though, Jerry. Although you can't hear us yet. I know you'll be back in a second. So by the way, I see a ton of you. Oh, Jen, you made your own. Back. That's very cool. Oh, there you are, Jerry. You're back. Okay. We, we right. lost you for a sec. All right. I'll go back. Uh, so my, extent, my extension table is huge. It's, it's not just for quilting. It's also for garments. I come from a garment background. So I work, you know, sometimes I've done couture work. So I've done ball gowns and wedding dresses, and that's a lot of fabric and a lot of bulk. So, um, you know, having this extension table is great for that as well. So uh, plowing along here, um, you may wonder what this little hole is. Well, let me show you. One thing I use for free motion, this is, and let me fold. All right, he's folding it back. <laughs> we got that. Oh, goodness gracious. This might be um, a very interesting ruler day. So, uh, by the way, while Jerry's coming back in with us, I saw quite a few of you say that you actually have the Luminaire XP2, and many of you said, oh, Jennifer, she said she loved using the Luminaire in a two-day class. That's awesome. And great to see you, Jennifer. Nice to see you. Um, internet overload. I agree, Tia. I agree. And Laura, we will soon. Here, Here you come. Sorry. Here you are. Ugh. I know this is frustrating. I apologize. Um, I know it's frustrating when I watch people and they they get their internet knocked out. So I do apologize. Um, okay, going back, this is a mat that I have used. It's a, um, it's a, it's a sliding type of mat. The white section here is a Teflon. Uh, so it makes sliding around very easily. The bottom side here is a pink, it's not an adhesive, it's kind of a rubber. Um, so when you place it on the mat of your, uh, on the bed of your machine, it will not slide around. It grips. It is not an adhesive, so you don't have to worry about anything, uh, any adhesives or anything on your machine. This is this is rubber. Another beautiful thing about this is if this gets a lot of lint on it, which mine does, all you have to do is run it under some water and let it air dry. So put it over like your shower curtain or your shower door, um, lay it over there, let it dry, and you're good to go. Um, and it will restick. So and. I see, uh, Susan, you want to know more about the uh, mat that he's using. We will get that from him soon. So 
if for some reason the internet doesn't cooperate, we'll definitely reschedule this. But I think so far I see Jerry back up there. So we'll just keep popping in and out. Is that you back, Jerry? Go in and out. Yep, I'm back. So, so just so you know, as you're talking about that, I know there's something where well, you froze when you were talking about um, that mat that you were using. So if you could just mention that too, just yeah, why that. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a sliding type of mat. Um, you can use uh, an oven liner. I know people have used an oven liner and they've taped it to the bed of their machine. Um, so what what mine is? It has a rubber backing. So this sticks to the bed of my machine. It's not an adhesive. It's a rubber product. So all it is is if it gets linty, you just run it under water, let it dry, throw it over your shower curtain or your shower door, let it air dry, and it'll re-stick again. And I have had, you know, bless its little heart, I have loved this thing for many, many years. It's got little tears in it um, from <laughs> quilting, but it's it's a champ. I've had this for probably about five years, and it, it it's it looks brand new. It's just well, except for the fact that I have quilted it into several quilts but um, <laughs> depending on you know well that's my fault i have you know you should rinse this off you should rinse the back off pretty often and i don't do it quite as often so it's my own fault to where uh it has slid and quilted itself into my quilts so <laughs> um so don't do that rinse it off quite often all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fold this back because i want to show you what's going on under my bobbin here uh, you can see, oh, isn't that cute? Little rip and tear. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my bobbin here. I've got the same thread in my bobbin as I do in the top. So the, the thread that I showed you, the pace setter, All right. It'll just take him a second to get back. So he's using pace setter brother embroidery thread, if you didn't know that. And here he's back. There you go, you know what, um, if you if you want, Angela, I can go get my Wi-Fi booster. That seems to be more stable. Uh, and I can just hook that up real quick and, you know, whatever you'd like to do. You know what? That might be a good idea. Just if if you if you all don't. There. There's Jerry. Why don't you do that? We don't mind waiting a second because um, when it's going back and forth like this, I'm not sure we, you know. I know. It's annoying. I, I get it. Yeah. Well, welcome to the world of technology. <laughs> totally. All right, go grab that. We'll be we'll wait for you. While he's doing that, while he's doing that, because he froze again, it'll just take a second to do that. So for those of you that are rolling in, <laughs> Jerry may need to reboot. He did reboot. It's like something going on over in California. I'm on the other side of the country. But um, if did any of you watch yesterday's show? Because yesterday I actually showed how to plan and sew the collar for the Linda tunic. For those of you that are following the Linda tunic, it was on there. And I'll be able to see Jerry as soon as he gets back. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think I actually, yeah. I do have my camera set up on that too. I haven't started sewing the shirt together yet. If you saw the fabric, it was this beautiful slinky. I'll just, I'll just share this while we're waiting for Jerry. It was a beautiful silk with velvet, which is really tricky to sew, right? But I did pull out my Move It foot, and now I'm testing a few samples because I want to sew probably a French seam on it. And I just need to make sure that this velvety stuff isn't going to be too thick for the French seam. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are hilarious. <laughs> yes, Ardell, I definitely agree. So, Jennifer, I'm actually, um, it should be posted on my blog later today, so you can go back and find it easily. So you guys want to get a good laugh while Jerry's, I don't see him back in the lobby yet. So nothing like, I didn't have anything planned for you. Or I would, I would teach you something. So we're sitting here talking and I'm talking and look, I'm wearing like the same matching top, <laughs> except a little, Hey, Jerry's back. Thank heavens. <laughs> All right, Jerry. I'm sorry. Well, hopefully I've got this plugged into a booster now. So hopefully this will, at least help my Wi-Fi signal a little bit. I am going to do this corded next time. I'm going to use an Ethernet cable, and I'm sure that will you stabilize everything. Everybody here totally gets it. The internet's crazy. Everybody's joking that the internet's uh, busy counting votes. It doesn't have enough room for us. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the bandwidth is taken up by that. But. Yes. So, all right, go. <laughs> Everybody's saying LOL. All right, Jerry, you want to go back to your machine? Take yep, two. Let me, let me go back to my camera here. All right. Perfect. All right. So let's keep our fingers crossed. All right, so again, here is my, my sliding mat here. You can use an oven liner if you like. 
Um, I have done that in a pinch. Um, it works well. It, you just have to tape it to the bed of your machine. So um, that's fine. I mean, again, just a review. It has a rubbery back. You just have to rinse that when it gets too linty and then you're good to go. Let it dry. Okay, again, in my bobbin, I have the exact same thread that I have in my top. This is a brother. This is a pace setter, uh, just a white embroidery thread. <gasps> embroidery thread. You're using embroidery thread to free motion quilt with? Yes, you may. There is no law or no rule that says you have to use one thread over the other. Um, one thing I do want to point out is, um, and it, those of you who were with me last time, uh, a little trick that I gave is when you are doing your bobbin, you know, we bring it around here, what, especially in embroidery, and there's a little, like a little razor blade down in there where we're going to cut the thread. Don't do that this time. Just leave it about halfway down. Do not cut the thread and leave a nice long tail. And I'll show you why. So let me slide this back around. There we go. We're right back to where we were. Nice long tail on top. Maybe a little too long, but that's okay. We're gonna cut that off. All right, so I am ready to go. Um, and I've got my machine set for free motion. So all you have to do is go into your settings menu as we did last time, and you're going to choose sewing and then go into your menu and choose free motion. And once you have done that, it will set your machine exactly for free motion. It'll drop your feed dogs automatically. You don't have to do it. And then your machine will, all your tension will be set perfectly. What I love about our machine is we still have manual control of our tension. So we can change the tension if we want to. Um, so if you're working with a metallic, you're going to have to drop the tension on your machine. Um, sometimes with some of the polys and cottons, you have to up the tension. You still have full manual control. So don't think that you're on your own. And if something goes screwy, you don't, you can't control it. Nope, you absolutely can. Hey, Jerry, just quick yes, question. Um, nobody could see your screen. For those that have the luminaire that don't really know where that is, is there is it possible for your camera to show that, or I can yeah, show it on mine? Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want it to be too shaky for people, but there we go. Just to give them a little preview, and you know, for future, yeah. I'll just you just when you do that next time, I, I have my machine set up so I can show them where it is. Okay. So I, all I did is here's my main menu. I just touched sewing, and now I'm in the main sewing menu. I touched right up here. That is your edit menu. Very first icon, I call it the telephone because <laughs> it looks like a telephone. It does look like a telephone. It's, it's your free motion. If you notice, that icon mimics the free motion uh, foot that I have on my machine. So that's what you're going to press. And you'll, you'll hear your machine make a noise. It's dropping the feed dogs and it's setting your machine for free motion. And then I'm just going to close that. You don't have to, but I do because I have OCD and things have to be closed. <laughs> so let me come on back. That's it. I mean, that's all I had to do. So I'm now in free motion and I'm ready to go. So here I have, I'm going to raise my presser foot. Here I have a, just a simple sandwich. Remember I said, do always do a test. I'm going to cut this thread. Um, always do a test. This would be, uh, an example of a test sandwich that I would use. And all it is, is a cotton, just a plain cotton backing. I just have a really inexpensive polyester batting because that's what I could grab. And then I have the same cotton top. Now, if you remember what we talked about before in free motion, um, you always want to, when you are testing uh, and you never want to test on your project because trust me, nobody hates using this seam ripper more than I do. <laughs> Trust Although me. yours is pretty. <laughs> well, I figure if I'm going to use it, it's going to look nice. So, <laughs> And this is a nice one because I can flip it around. Um, one end is a seam ripper. The other end is a stiletto. And I usually use this end when I have to use this end. <laughs> 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 I call this lovingly the enemy because I really don't like using it. So I try to uh, minimize the usage of this by really preparing, thinking about things beforehand. Where do I want to start quilting? Where do I want to go? Um, otherwise, I have to spend time ripping out. And trust me, it's it'll take you five minutes to free motion something and two minutes to rip or two hours to rip it out. So I don't like to you to uh, I like to prep as much as possible. Um, so that's I mean, that's a good lesson for anything with sewing, having to do with sewing or quilting. So um, what you want to do is uh, you want to test. Now, if you are doing a particular quilt, don't do my setup 
here, if you have a cotton batting or you have two layers of batting and you have a polyester top, um, this would not work for you. What you wanna do is mimic as close as possible your practice sandwich with what your project is. So in this case, if you have cotton backing, polyester batting and a cotton top, you're good. So now you can practice, you can check your tension, everything should be fine. Um, if you're using something other than this, you're, I cannot guarantee that your tension is gonna be good. Um, so try to mimic your project as closely as you can. So right now, I mean, this is this is it. I'm, I'm in free motion, I'm ready to go. So again, I'm just gonna do a quick overview of what we did last time. And that was, at this point, what I'm gonna do is drop my needle into my project and I'm going to raise the needle again and I'm gonna lift my presser foot to release the tension, just pull my project toward me and give a little tug on my top thread. And if you'll notice what comes through is my bobbin thread right there. So remember I said to leave a long tail, this is why. So now you can grab that tail and you can pull it up and there you go. Now you're ready to go. It's a long tail, that's fine. You can either uh, do like some little micro stitches to lock this into place. You can bury these, but the point of having a long tail is now you have choices. Whereas if you were going to let the machine cut it your, itself, it leaves a very short tail, um, which isn't really good for free motion. You wanna leave as long a tail as possible. So now what I'm gonna do is exactly where that bobbin thread came up, I'm going to get it as close to my needle as I can and drop my needle again. And now I'm going to lower my presser foot and wait. And why do I say wait? Because at this point, people are gonna start tearing into their free motion and they're not gonna like it. And they're going to have to break out the enemy again and start ripping things out. So at this point, you're ready to go. Your, your needle is down, everything is stable. Don't panic, <laughs> take a minute to breathe and think about what you're doing. Where am I gonna go? What pattern am I going to use? Um, how am I gonna do this? And this is why I say preparation is key. Um, now at this point, you're just going to press your uh, your foot pedal and off you go. And I'm just going to do some quick free motion here. It's so quiet, Jerry. Isn't that amazing? I just love, you know, and, and a lot of people will um, they'll listen to music and television and that's fine. I, I, you know, I do occasionally too, but I just love to listen to the hum of my machine. Um, I really just like to quilt with, with nothing. I like to just have silence. Um, and mainly because if something's going to go wrong, you're gonna hear it before you see it. So I can catch it real quick. So again, just, and again, if you notice, I'm just concerned with what's in this area. I make a little diamond or a little like a U shape with my hand. And all I'm worried about is what's happening here. I'm not worried about way out here or way toward me. I'm only focused on this. And when you're free motioning, you are creating the stitch length. Remember, you are, you are creating the pattern and you are creating the stitch length. So it's all on you. So this is going to take some practice. And you're just going to free motion. You're just going to practice. Give me 10 minutes a day. And I guarantee after, I don't guarantee often, I guarantee that after a week, you are going to see some progress. So if you really want to, want to get into this, I suggest making seven small sandwiches and using a Sharpie and writing the date somewhere on the on that little sandwich and write the date every single day that you practice. And then you can look back and you can see how your progress is made and that raises your confidence level. So if you're having a day that's frustrating, you can go back and get your very first sandwich and look at it and go, yeah, I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> that's so. a great idea. Yeah, so I, I did that when I got my long arm too. I wanted to see if there was any any progress. Um, and that's what made me realize I'm not a long armor. <laughs> as much as I admire it, and I'm by no means knocking long arming. I think it's wonderful. But it, it just, it wasn't for me. And that's how I knew because I looked at, at the last day that I, I long armed and the first day, and it was 30 days and I didn't see any progress for me. So that may not be for you, but that's, again, I wouldn't have known that unless I had tried it and I had the dates. So um, just write the date on your project and you'll be good to go. All right, now that is free motion. And so let me turn this here. You can just kind of see, you know, the stitching is fairly even. 
Um, again, don't practice on your project. Use a sandwich like this first. And like I said before, uh, and this includes ruler work too, anytime you are working at your machine, you know, some of us are very stressed out. We have very stressful lives. And now we're gonna sit down and we're gonna sew and quilt. Well, that's a bad idea. <laughs> because all of that stress is gonna transfer from your arms to your hands and it's gonna show in your project. So just try to relax, listen to some music, um, have a glass of wine or something that relaxes, chamomile tea, something that relaxes you, and just take a, you know five, 10 minutes to just relax before you do any kind of stitching. Um, because then you can just, you know, you can breathe, all that stress goes out and you're actually, your brain is now getting ready to sew. So it's it's very tough to come in from a stressful day, sit down, and boom, everything is is good. So just take take a minute to breathe. Um, okay, so that's free motioning with this O foot. Now I'm going to talk about ruler work. Now what is ruler work? And I, I be honest with you, I don't like that term because I think it's confused with our rotary cutting rulers. Um, I like to use the word templates because I think that's kind of what they are more than, and they're not really rulers. So I like to, to use the word templates. So now we're gonna do some work with templates, but we have to change this foot. And let me tell you about the foot that we're gonna use. I'm going to change out to this. This is a generic ruler foot. Now I can't tell you which one to use for your machine because I know some of you are using different manufacturers. I don't know what the number is for your particular machine. So you're gonna have to check with your dealer and your manufacturer. Now for Brother, this is just a generic um, uh, ruler foot that they have, it's called a ruler foot. Um, and as you can see, it's just got a little area here. This is where I'm gonna connect it to my machine. And there is a little circle here that is closed at the front. There is an open toe version of this, but if you're doing, and you, you can get away with that, but if you're really gonna do ruler work, you wanna get the closed section in the front. This is called a closed toe because it's closed in the front. You wanna use this so that you can put your ruler right up here to the front. If you Sometimes there are instances where you have to do that. If you have an open toe, you're not gonna be able to do that. So you really do wanna use a closed toe foot for your ruler work. So it has a little circle here. Um, here's a little trick that I like to use. Um, on the inside, and I haven't done it to this one yet because it's new. Um, on the inside of this foot, sometimes you get reflections on your project and the light hits it and bounces off and gives you a really weird shadow. What I like to do is on the very inside, there might be a little better, the very in, see how it's reflecting now? That reflection can show up on your project. Go and get some matte white fingernail polish and just lightly brush the inside of this foot with a matte white fingernail polish, and that will eliminate any reflections off of this foot. So there's a little trick right there. That is a great tip, Jerry. That's a really great tip. And I've got a whole stash of that nail polish. Yeah, <laughs> make sure it's matte because you're trying to cut down on the shine. <laughs> you don't want to make it more shiny. So just make sure that it's just a matte, cover the inside very lightly with your fingernail polish. That can, if you don't like it and it doesn't work for you or you ever want to, get rid of that, it's easily peeled off. So that's the frustrating thing about our nails is, you know, nail polish peels off eventually. But um, so you can take this off at any time. So it's not gonna hurt your foot. Don't worry about that at all. So matte white fingernail polish. Um, and that works really, really well. Okay, so now I gotta change out my foot. So let me go ahead and cut my thread. And all I'm gonna do is take my little screwdriver, my brother's screwdriver. If you have one of these, and you go to an event, you take your machine to an event, please be um, mindful of this. These are a hot commodity. <laughs> so just yes, make sure they you are. Know, where your, know where your screwdriver is at all times. So all I'm gonna do is take my foot off here and I am going to remove the, uh, remove the uh, screw entirely. I'm gonna place my foot on and just put it back. I gotta find out where the little hole is and once I find it, I'm gonna put it back in. And for my machine, this works best when, now see, this is adjustable, so I can raise and lower this. So according to the instructions that you'll get with the foot, you have to, uh, with your manufacturer, it'll tell you how to set the height adjustment. Now for, the, for me, on my XP, I just drop it all the way down and screw it in, and that works for me. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my screen, because right now my, uh, I need to make an adjustment. So I'm gonna come on over. And I am set at 1-03, which puts my straight stitch right in the middle. 
Um, however, it's not in the middle of the foot. So I have to change, I have to adjust it with the left, right shift. So I'm just going to look at my needle and I'm going to just hit the up arrow till I find the middle. And for me, it's 4.5 plus 4.5 millimeters. So once I have done that, I'm gonna come on over and my needle has now shifted right to the middle of the foot. Why is that important? I'll tell you why. Because from the needle to the end of the foot is exactly a quarter of an inch. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. So again, from the needle to the outside of the foot is a quarter of an inch. Well, that makes it really easy for us as quilters because we're really familiar with a quarter of an inch. Um, so I'm ready to go. So I'm ready to start quilting. However, I kind of need a ruler, don't I? Or a template. So let me talk to you about that. A oh, let me talk to you about feet just really quickly. Um, I'm going to, to make a disclaimer here and, and don't do what I'm going to tell you to do. This is purely an example. <laughs> this is a, this is like one of those health movies to be very careful. <laughs> um, public, public service video. <laughs> so, um, I have heard of people saying, yeah, but you know, my friend used her zipper foot and used uh, uh, just her regular ruler, her, her rotary cutting ruler, and she was able to do straight lines with that. And I went, okay. So let me ask you, Angela, why is a zipper foot called a zipper foot? <laughs> I'm gonna go with because it's for sewing in the zipper and to stay away from the teeth of the zipper, but I have never thought of it for this, by the way. <laughs> ding, 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 we have a winner. <laughs> yeah, you, I don't think I would. Your feet are called things for the reason that of what their use is. A zipper foot is not to be used for ruler work. Don't ever do that. She goes, yeah, but my friend did it and it worked. And I said, you know, I have two friends that tried that and the ruler slipped underneath the foot and the needle slammed right into the plastic and they had to take their machines in and have the timing adjusted. So yeah. don't do that. <laughs> that would not be good, not yes. be good. I, I have a hard enough time when I break my needle threader, which has only happened twice, but it was because of a bonehead move on my own part. That would be worse. <laughs> well, you know, I only say that, and I hate to say don't do something because then somebody's going to go, oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I'm going to try it. <laughs> don't do that in this instance because it, it could be that your ruler slides under, your needle slams into it, and the next thing you know, you're calling your tech and your, your machine's not working. So don't do it. Well, Jerry said I could. No, I did not. I said don't do it. <laughs> So now I'm ready, I've got my ruler foot on there. So let's talk about the templates that you're gonna use. So like what I just said, I'm gonna grab a rotary cutting ruler here. Um, as we all know, rotary cutting rulers, and I hope you can see this, are only an eighth of an inch thick. They're meant, they're perfect for rotary cutting. They are absolutely disastrous for ruler work <laughs> or template work. These are an eighth of an inch. They are not meant to use uh, for ruler work. Now, again, remember our, our, our notions and our feet, they're called certain things for certain reasons. These are rotary cutting rulers, correct? What are they meant for? Rotary cutting. They're not called rotary cutting slash ruler work uh, rulers. So you don't want to do this because, again, even with the ruler foot, once I put it down, this is going to hop and there is a chance that that ruler is going to slip under. See how easy I can do it here that ruler slips underneath the foot and, and all of a sudden your needle is slamming into the plastic. So what you wanna use is a template or ruler, as it, some people call them, that is made specifically for this. If you notice how much, the, oh, I know the lighting is shining off there, but here, let me turn my light down a bit. Um, you can see how much thicker this is than the rotary cutting ruler. So again, this is eighth of an inch, this is quarter of an inch. This is what you want, take your ruler, Put it by your rotary cutter and leave it there. Do not get it anywhere near your machine. So this is nice and thick. So what happens now is when you place this next to your ruler foot, it's almost the height of your foot. There is absolutely, unless you make it do that, there is absolutely no way this ruler is going to slip underneath your foot. So this is what you want. Now, what, what kind of ruler do I get is what you're asking. So that's, that's an absolutely wonderful question. And I'm going to say it this way. Um, there, if you've been to a show or an event, there are vendors whose booths are dedicated to nothing but these templates and it's overwhelming. And you just walk into this booth and you're like, I don't even know where to start. Well, Jerry's going to tell you where. All you need is a, a straight ruler, 
this is what you're going to start with. Just get a straight ruler, no more than 12 inches. All right, that'll make it very easy for you to use. One that has a straight edge, you can have a straight edge here, but find one that has a long straight edge. That's gonna be your first ruler. Your next ruler is going to be an arc or a curved type of ruler. One that has a nice arc to it. Those, this is going to cover about 90% of all of your ruler work. Um, you know, people are going to say, well, yeah, but what about this? And what about, you know, like ribbons? And what about if I'm doing, um, you know, clamshells and things? You can still do them with these. But my point is, if you want to graduate onto those, that's fine. But get the basics down first. So all you need is just a curve and a straight. And that will cover so much of your quilting that um, you don't have to go out and spend thousands of dollars on these templates. Um, they can be expensive. So just get a straight one and just get a curved one and then branch out from there. At least if if you're not crazy about this, you're only out two rulers instead of buying a giant set of them that, you're, that you may not ever use. So just start off with these two things and you should be just fine. That's now, a great, you know, tip too, Jerry. great tip because I would think that I would need everything since I'm not yeah. a big quilter. I would want to go get everything and then it would all sit in my stash. No, if you want to later, that's absolutely fine. They're going to be there for you, trust me. But start out with a straight and a curve. That will cover so much of it. And really, those are the basics. Once you have a straight a straight line with your ruler and once you have an arc or a curve with your ruler, everything else is just using those two shapes, using a straight line and a curve line. Everything else is using that. So you'll branch out later. But you, I, I got to interrupt you just for a sec. I'm no, looking at your ruler, and I was thinking the same thing that Kelly was asking, uh, looking at that ruler while it's there. Did you put those grippers on there, or did they come that way? I was. You could not have asked this at a better time. That's just where I was going. Is I was going to say, you may see some of these things on my rulers. Well, let me talk to you about some of these things. These are little grippers. And sometimes um, when we're doing free motion work, um, it, it, our rulers can slip because they're really smooth. Most of the time these are made for long arms and all the long armor does is they place the ruler down and the head moves along the edge. So they don't have to worry too much about slipping. With us, we're moving the ruler and our project against. So we do need some gripping. Um, you don't have to, sometimes your ruler works fine. It's all just depending on what you need. Um, but these are just, a, and I'm gonna talk about some of the things that are available. These are little rubber, um, little rubber circles that you can use. They're, they also have some that are made, let me get it better in the camera here. There we go. Um, they, they're also made uh, little sandpaper dots or there are sheets of this rubber that you could put on the back. So if you want the whole ruler covered in, um, there, there is that available. Again, check with your dealer, check with your manufacturer. They'll be able to tell you, you know, just say, I wanna get some grips for my rulers. They know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so you just find the right one that, that works for you and just they're not expensive So you can experiment with this and play with the one that works for you now If you are going like me, I use bizarre fabrics on my in my quilt I, I go down the aisles you don't go down normally when you're making a quilt So in my quilts, there is upholstery fabric and satins and silks the problem with the sandpaper ones I do want to caution you if you're gonna do the sandpaper ones and you're gonna work with silks and satins it can break those top threads with the sand. Um, the sand is very sharp and it can cut through your threads. Um, it's fine on cotton. I have not had that problem on cotton, but the, the sandpaper ones can snag uh, your satins and it can cut through your silk. So just be careful with that. Um, play around with that. Other than that, you're, you're good to go. I would suggest getting a template that has a lot of lines on it because this is going to be your guidelines as you're, as you're going along quilting. And, and I'll explain that a little bit better as we, as we start quilting so that makes a little more sense to you. But try to get one that has as many lines on it as you can. See, this has diagonals and all of these eighth inch lines and quarter inch lines. I'm going to show you what that all means. So let's go ahead and get, oh, there's also uh, a ruler that um, you could do like Velcro. Uh, there's a Velcro backing. This is the hook part of, of the Velcro, the sticky part. Um, again, it works well on cotton. You want to be careful on very fragile fabrics like silks and satins because it can pull, tug, and, and kind of snag the tops of them. So just, again, just experiment. Get a little piece of it. Try it with your with your ruler and your the backing on your ruler and see if it works for you. Um, so now I'm ready to go. So 
what I like to do is, uh, you know, I've got my trusty little quilting gloves that I love. These also help uh, immensely when you're doing ruler work. Uh, you can use your hands, but you know, our hands do give off oil and you can be slippy. So I've got quilting gloves here and on the tips, they are rubberized. They're little rubberized tips. Most people have seen these. They're really lightweight. Uh, they're a knit product. So they're really, you can see the light right through that. Um, they're very light. They're breathable. I, my hands don't sweat. Um, there are many kinds on the market. So you have to find the one that's right for you. Some friends of mine even use gardening gloves with the little dots on them. That works fine too. Just find the product that works for you. Um, and now just like free motion quilting, what I want to do is, and here's going to be a good example because my little, um, I didn't leave a long, I didn't leave a long tail. So as you can see, so now what I, I want to do, since I, I've used the cutter, I want to go in and just pull that tail out just so it's a little bit longer in my bobbin. And you can see how fast this works. So that's what's really nice about these products is they're really easy to use and they're made for this. So I'm gonna drop my needle, bring it back up, pull it forward, grab my top thread, grab, pull it forward. And there's my bobbin thread coming right up. I'm just gonna grab that. And just like before, I'm going to place uh, right where that bobbin came up, I'm gonna place it right underneath my needle and drop my needle and what? wait <laughs> do not start right away just take a breath think about what you're doing um and once you are ready and relaxed and you feel that you're good to go all you're going to do there, there is a little bit of a technique to this so what you're going to do is you're going to take the edge of your template and you're going to ride it along the edge of your foot so you're just going to place it so it goes right up against it and stops and uh, I've got some hand technique that I use, but what I want you to realize, don't worry about what's happening around your needle, all right? You're not worried about that. Your machine is gonna do just fine on its own. And all you're worried about is making sure that that ruler stays against the foot. This is just, you know, it's gonna take some practice. It's not gonna feel um, perfectly comfortable right off the bat, but what's gonna happen is you're, you're going to get this technique. This is why I say do a test first. Just play with this first. So now I have got, you know, again, this is a way, not the way I've got three fingers on my ruler and I've got my two fingers out here on my quilt. This is just how I do it. Now my thumb, I bring my thumb up. So my four fingers are on the quilt and my one thumb is on the ruler. Again, this is just my technique. This is just something you're going to have to play with and figure out. This is what works for me. Again, this is a way, not the way, but this works for me. I feel like I have a grip on the ruler, and I have a grip on my project. Um, you have to be in control. If at any time you feel out of control, change things around, change your hand position so that it feels comfortable for you. All right, so now it's, again, it's just free motion, but I'm not worried about my needle. I'm just concentrating to make sure that that ruler is riding right along the edge of my foot. Now I'm not pushing, I'm not pushing this ruler into the foot. I'm just letting it glide along the edge and just let it go. And you're going to stop, change your hand position as need be. And then you're going to keep going. You see how my ruler is just nicely gliding right along and look what I get. A nice straight line. Isn't that nice? That really looks great. It's that hard really to do it. It's really oh, hard to do it. I'll go real quick, Jerry. Susan uh, has a quick question for you. Um, that. Why did you pull the, she wants to know why you pulled the bobbin thread up. Because, oh, great question, Susan. Um, yes, I forgot to say that. Thank you for reminding me. Um, you don't, what can happen is, um, what can happen is the thread can ball up underneath and you get a big thread nest. So what that does is it makes the, the underneath side really nice and clean and it gives you a tail. So if you want to uh, knot up your top and bobbin thread and then bury that thread, you have a very clean top and bottom. Um, there is that tendency where that thread can just nest up really bad underneath. So, and that's not what you want, especially if you're working on like an heirloom quilt or something like that. So you want to be real careful. Perfect. So, thank you, Jerry. Sure. Thank you, Susan. Now, what I'm going to do, let me, let me come up a little bit here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay. So here's what's really important. Remember I said it's a quarter of an inch away from the needle to the outside of the foot here. So 
what I'm going to do, let's say that I want to um, go a quarter of an inch away from my straight line. Okay. So all I'm going to do is take the edge. I know there's a shadow here. I apologize. But I am taking the edge of my ruler and I'm just writing it right along that previous straight stitch that I just created. And I'm going to move my ruler over and just let it ride right along. And you can kind of see as I'm doing this. I now have a perfect quarter of an inch line away from the, the previous one. And you can keep going. I mean, if you're doing modern quilts, this is wonderful. I mean, pencil quilting or straight line quilting is really big if you're doing modern quilts. And this makes it so easy. Some people have a really hard time with, with doing straight lines. Oh this my gosh, Sharon, you're making this look so simple. I could actually be doing this uh, on a jacket or something like that. This is so simple to do. Well, and it is. It's really, it's a lot of fun. Again, it's a technique you're going to have to practice. You're going to have to just play with it. But again, you are only got two rulers. I told you to just get two rulers. So if you don't like it, you're only out two rulers. So not a big deal at all. So, you know, I, I hesitate to word to use the word easy because I, I understand that one person's easy is one person, the next person's really difficult. I get that. Um, and that's why I love, oops, sorry. That's why I love the, the sewing arts because some people love garments. Some people love quilts. Some people, I love that. It's so diverse and I love the diversity in it. And there's so many notions and techniques within all of that, that some of us use and some of us don't. And you know, this is just a really great way to help. You know, some people are not good at straight line quilting. Some people are not good at curves. Some people love to do feathers. Some people hate to do feathers. Um, you know, it, it, you just have to find, and that's a point that I want to make. You have to find those things that work for you. If you go, you know, I do a lot of competition quilts and my friends do a lot of competition quilts. And if you go to a quilt show, use the quilts as a classroom. For me, it's a classroom. It's a learning experience. Um, it's a way to kind of take a class with the, maybe you can't, um, your budget's tight and you can't take a class with a teacher. Well, go see their quilt because that's a classroom environment right there. You know, take it all in, take a technique. Maybe don't look at it as a whole, break it down into one little section of their quilt and go, you know what? Maybe the, the whole thing is a little overwhelming for me, but I can do this one section right here. I can try that. So, you know, it, it frustrates me and I understand it when people stand in front of quilts and they go, oh, I'll never be able to do that. Well, you've just glass ceilinged yourself. You've just said, yep, you're right. That's as far as I'm going to go. But break it down, look at one little section and say, yep, I can do that. So. Awesome. These are great tips. Awesome. I am just, I always say I've been quilting since 1976. And if I don't teach and get this information out, my head will explode. So. <laughs> Love, I'm full of tips and tricks. So, I mean, we could do this all day long. I mean, we can, and it's, it is really easy. Again, I'm just controlling my stitch length, just lot, riding that ruler right along there, and I'm going to come over. Now, how do I know if I'm going over to the right, how do I know where to stop? Well, if I want to do another quarter inch line, remember my needle is exactly a quarter of an inch away from the outer foot. So, I'm going to stop on this line a quarter of an inch. I'm going to ride my foot right along this edge, right? Why? Because it's a quarter of an inch. So now all I have to do is put my ruler up against my foot. I know that I'm perfectly a quarter of an inch away. Off I go. I'm just going to stitch all the way down. And there we go. I, I, just in that quick time, I've got five lines of straight, straight line quilting that look fantastic. So let's try this with a curve now, just to see what, what happens here. Same I'm excited thing. The curve. I think the curve is going to be super cool. And I love, I never, I actually never really paid attention that, that those rulers have those little lines in there. So it's so easy to follow to make such. Oh, well, yeah. I, I love this. And that's why I say, try to get one that has a lot of lines on it. So you can practice different things. Like this one has not just a quarter of an inch away, but an eighth of an inch away. So again, if you're doing modern quilts and you love doing that really dense, tight um, pencil quilting or really tight quilting, this is, you know, like I say, get one with as many lines on it as you can. So you can play with all of these different techniques. Now you'll notice here 
This is a little different, these little dots. Do you know what those are? Those, nope. are, those are stoppers for cabinets. Those little bumpers that you can oh, get from your store. Yeah. Those are little cabinet bumpers. So if you have some of those, put those on there. If you have the felt ones, those will work too. You might get a little slippage, but try it. But try these little cabinet stoppers. Those work really well too. So again, all I'm worried about is my ruler right against my foot. And I'm just gonna follow it around. Notice, um, I'm gonna drop, notice I'm not twisting or turning. Um, I am letting the ruler and the foot do the work. I'm not doing any, any of this to make it curve. It's curving on its own because of the ruler. So let's go down here. Again, I know that my needle is a quarter inch away from the outer of the foot, so I'm going to stop when that previous line of stitching touches the outer portion of my, the outer portion. And now again, I'm gonna line up the edge of the ruler with my previous line of stitching, drop my foot, and now I can go the other way. So Donna says, how do you continuously go in reverse? That's because the feed dogs are down, Donna. He's not really sewing. Absolutely, yeah, you are controlling everything. Yep, you are in control. This is there. There are no patterns built into the machine that I'm using. The, the designs are in my head, and I'm letting my hands and my my notions do the work here. So again, all I'm doing is I'm placing the edge of the ruler on my previous line of stitching. And how do I know? Okay, I have to move, but how do I know when to stop? Again, when my previous line of stitching touches the edge of the foot. I know that I'm a quarter of an inch away. So let's line this up with my stitching and I'll just do one more line and I'll show you what this looks like. I just can't get over how quiet. I mean, I know these machines are awesome because I have one, but I've not done the free motion like you're doing. It's so quiet and you're right there. Your mic is right in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. I'm literally about two, th my mic's about two or three feet away from my machine, from the motor. So, so it's really good. And that's why I love to free motion because it's just our machines are so wonderful and they sound so good. All right, watch this. You know, isn't that cool? That looks amazing. Nice curves. I've got some nice straight lines. So those of you who are highly intimidated uh, by straight lines and curves, no more. Well, now I can go in and even with this foot, I can start doing, you know, I can fill this section in with stippling. Jerry, that looks fantastic. I mean, this is like this is like whole cloth. You know, you could create your own whole cloth. You can stitch in between these lines if you want to. You could have a solid line and then a line of stitching and then an open line. So, I mean, you can start even just on this little practice piece. You could have the beginnings of something, you know, and I never, that's another tip. I, I don't really get rid of my sandwiches until, my practice sandwiches, until I'm really sure about getting rid of them. Because I will look back at them and like this, go, you know, this is, I can do something with this. So I'll, I'll get out my little sketchbook and I'll just kind of sketch a design or something. I'm not, I'm not an artist by any means. I'm not a drawer. So I know people hear that word and they panic, but I'm just a sketcher. <laughs> I just roughly sketch things out. So um, yeah, so this is just uh, something that I would probably put aside and go and just start doodling, you know, doodle a design in this line, leave this one open, do a doodle here. The next thing you know, you've got a practice piece that you're looking at and going, I kind of dig this. This might be great in a bigger project. Or I can use this on you know, a project that I've had set aside uh, for something special. So this is just another technique. And I know we're almost done here. So if we want to take this a few one, minutes this to- so much fun. Everybody say these are great tips. Awesome. Sylvia says, uh, mind blowing. <laughs> Don't you love Sylvia? <laughs> it's not, it's not, again, I don't want to say easy, but it's not overly difficult. Let's put it that way. Um, it's it's just another technique to practice, but that's why I say just get two rulers and just have at it. Just keep playing and turning your rulers. You can come up with some crazy designs with just two rulers. So oh, um, this I is so fun. So we have more questions for you too, but I'll let, let, let's take a look at some of your samples. Yeah. And then I got a few more questions when you come back on live. Yep. I got some samples here of things that I did. And oh. at the very bottom, at the very bottom, 
Um, I'm going to try to hold this up. You can see these curved lines. These were done with rulers. So I used rulers at the bottom. But see, there's silk and there's faux leather. And this is all satin. So <laughs> this is all the craziness. This is the craziness that I live with. <laughs> um, this is a butterscotch satin. This is a test piece that I, uh, again, ruler work here, straight line ruler. This is a test piece. I'm working on a, uh, a competition quilt. And this is a test piece for designs that I may want to use. Okay, your test piece would be beautiful. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a test piece. I would call that a masterpiece. But see, this is what I'm saying is, is don't throw your test pieces away and say, okay, well, that was just a practice piece. Now, if I filled all this in, this would be great for like, maybe this is a design for the lapel of a jacket, or this would be great for a pocket on a tote bag. I would not get rid of this. I would use this. I would use this as an inset for another project. Absolutely so, gorgeous. So this is satin as well. I'm known as the king of bling. <laughs> I use crystals on a lot of things. Um, I only, I don't overly do it. I just do it where I think it needs it. But this is all metallic threads. This was a feather study that I did, again, would be really nice for the side of a tote bag. This was just a practice thing, just free motion. And I don't mark when I do free motion. Um, I may draw, like here, I may draw just the spine, um, but then everything else is, is non-marked. And don't say that I was born doing that. I was not born doing this. So this took practice for me to get to <laughs> So you can do this as well. Um, neons, neons are threads are my ultimate, just go to have fun type of thing. Um, they're awesome just to have fun with. They look great on white, they look great on black, but neon threads are so much fun. And then I can uh, put them on garments when I go clubbing. Yeah, my years of clubbing are done. So <laughs> Actually, I think all of, our, uh, all of our days of clubbing are done for a little bit longer. <laughs> hey, you gotta be a kid at heart. Okay, this is uh, dance wear spandex. This is a gold dance wear spandex. Um, it has a lot of stretch oh in it. Oh my gosh, I would have never in a million years thought of using dance wear spandex for that. It yeah. looks amazing on there. Not so good on the body, but it looks amazing on there. <laughs> well, you know, the thing that makes dance wear so great is it's so stretchy, but that's yeah. not what we want when we're cool thing. So all I did is I used a very inexpensive, very cheap, uh, fusible interfacing, a very sheer weight, feather weight, light, the lightest weight that I could find fusible, fused it to the back of this and it took out all the stretch. And oh now God. I just layered it up and I wanted, to, I wanted to do a test piece to have it look like hammered metal. And I think that's what I got. I think that's, that's what I got. So I also like to say in free motion quilting, be careful of the sizes that you use. Because if you're doing a king size quilt and you're doing little tiny pebbling, you're going to be there the rest of your natural born life trying to finish that quilt. Um, <laughs> I will, and I say that because this little area here is just little tiny circles of black thread, I mean, really tiny circles. This whole area here took about two hours to fill. So oh my needless, gosh. yeah, needless to say the rest of it. So you just wanna be careful on the size that you wanna free motion on. And last but not least, we have, um, this is couching, free motion couching. You know, we have couching feet available for our, uh, for our machines. This is a chenille thread with just a white, inexpensive white background, layered it up just like a regular quilt. So on the back, you'll see the stitching um, and use and free motion quilted using chenille yarn. That's and gorgeous. I love the couching. I absolutely am addicted to that. As oh, far yeah. as putting well, you know, I have, a, I have a friend that has an online store and you know, these, these chenille bedspreads from the fifties and sixties that were so huge. Well, they've come back again, especially in my area of Palm Springs, where, you know, mid-century modern, it's like, this is the place to be if you're going to be in mid-century modern. So, um, you know, I'm going to switch my camera back here. Ta -da. Oh, good. There you are. Hey. Yes. So, you know, mid-century modern is so huge in my area. Um, my friend has an online store and she uses her brother XP with the couching to make her own chenille bedspreads. Oh and my she God. sells them for $1,500 and there are bidding wars. <laughs> Over wow. So I make your machine pay for itself. That's what I always say. Every machine pay yeah. for itself. So. Definitely. Just to, I know our hour is up, but there's a couple questions that I just have to throw up here for you. If you don't mind, are you good oh, for a couple no, more minutes? I'm good. Throw them at me. Um, so Bernadette says, did you just use the arc ruler to make the feather sample? 
Good question. No, no. I used, um, that is all free motion. Um, I had said earlier that I, I don't really mark anything. I will occasionally mark like the spine of the feather, but all my feathers are free motion. It's all just with my hands and my head. So, and you all can do this. I'm telling you, you can do this. It just takes a little practice. Um, yeah. At first, at first, it's frustrating, just like anything. When you first learned how to drive a car, did you was it frustrating or did did you do it beautifully? Of course, it was frustrating. Um, you had to learn that technique. It's the same with free motion quilting. Don't give up. I, so only, went, I only backed into the the uh, trash can three times. That's it. Okay, <laughs> you're you're ruining my example here, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually learned how to change the tail light because it was pretty expensive after time, too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, you learned your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jerry, Joyce wants to know, someone told me I shouldn't use my dream for ruler work. What? Your dream machine? Are you talking about your dream machine, Joyce? Absolutely incorrect. I, I can't tell you how much I ruler worked on my dream machine. You can ruler work on the 3600. You can ruler work on any machine that accepts the ruler foot. Now, I will very quickly say there are ruler feet for high shank and low shank machines. Make sure that you talk to your dealer about which you have. So the XP is a high shank machine. So you want to look for a ruler with a high shank. That just means that that little bar, the needle bar, sits higher uh, than other machines. They'll, usually they sit a little bit lower. So just check and make sure that you're using the right, shank, the right ruler for your machine. Absolutely. And also the, the brother dealers, if you don't have one close to you, this is something that they can ship to you as well. So if you just call them, tell them what machine you have, they'll tell that they'll tell you what they have and stick it in the mail. That makes yep. it easy. They know. Uh, Judy, they know. Judy has a quick question. Is there a trick for stitch length? Judy, thanks for yeah. joining us on YouTube. Yes, practice. <laughs> um, so, so the goal is you want it to look like if you were just going to have your feed dogs raised and you were going to do a line of straight stitching just regular, just generic straight stitching, that's the goal to shoot for, for a stitch length when you're free motioning. So do some lines of stitching, straight stitching, um, just with your regular sewing machine, then change over to free motion and try to free motion right next to those lines and mimic those lines. So at least you have an example, something to follow. Try to get to that as close as you can, and that will help even out your stitch length. Because you don't want like, you know, five inch stitch lengths in your free right. motion stitching. You want to kind of <laughs> narrow that down. So I always say try to mimic your straight stitching. So Jennifer wants to know, how big do you make your test samples usually? Um, the biggest one that I have is probably about, oh, 15 inches square. But most of them are right around like 12 inches, things like that. Yeah, nothing nothing too big it, because they're test samples and I'm practicing. So I don't want to I don't want to get too big yet. I don't want to be like I'm working on a full size quilt. Right. And um, can you show couching? Well, Krista, we'll have him come back on the next show. We'll definitely have to add couching to this because that was absolutely gorgeous. Couching and then one with the metallic thread. That's absolutely amazing to me. Well, and I will warn you that this is yet another addiction because now you're going to go down the yarn aisles and you're going to go, hey, what would that look like on my project? Oh, now yes. the yarn aisles are open for your sewing. <laughs> yes, it definitely adds to your stash. Stash, yes. speaking of from experience. Yeah. <laughs> so this was awesome, Jerry. Thank you all for joining. Oh, Joanne says first time she drove, she ended up in a ditch. Joanne, see? <laughs> Jerry, you opened Pandora's box on this one. <laughs> well, at least we won't be sewing into a ditch, so that's good. <laughs> yes, and Betty, you can do this on your Quattro. Quattro is a yeah. low shank, isn't it, though, if I remember correctly? I believe, I want to say it's high. I think everything I after remember. is high. I can't remember, but check with your dealer. Check with your dealer. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Everybody's saying thank you. Thank you. So you can come back. If you came in late, you can come back and watch the show later. It's on Brother So's Facebook and YouTube page, Brother Crafting Facebook and YouTube page. So if you've missed this whole series of educators coming on, we've every Thursday for about at least six weeks we've been doing this. You can go back and you can just binge watch. Put all these videos in your watch party and you'll have something to do this weekend. And you know where to find Jerry. If you have any questions, you can always leave a comment here. We always try to go back and uh, check that out. So Jerry, and thank very, you so much. This was so informational. Well, very quickly, Angela, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to do this um, and making this available. I know people have questions. I know people, you know, I am too. I'm a creative, so I'm hungry. I'm always hungry for information and techniques. So thank you so much for inviting me and having me on your on your show. And uh, I oh, really so appreciate it.
Awesome. And Jerry, we always love to have you. And this is so nice to be able to do this because we're stuck at home, kind of. Well, not totally, but at least we can sit yeah. here and hang out and um, see people from all over the world. So everyone, yeah. thank you for joining us. I can hardly wait to hear back in January, Jerry. Uh, we Me might be before then, but I know in January. So everyone have a wonderful day. And Jerry, and pumpkin oh. spice everything. Pumpkin spice <laughs> everything. It's that time of year. Just wanted to throw that in there. Definitely. We'll I, you know what? I have, I've got the coffee going today and oh, I have my, my cup with fly fish on it. Cause I'm just oh, like, you know, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta do a show on fishing sometime. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah. All right, Jerry, you have a great day, everyone. Thank you, you for being here. And for the schedule for next week, if you go to brother, so's uh, Facebook page is on there. I, I believe, um, I don't have it right in front of me, but it's uh, Monday and Tuesday next week. So see you then. Have a great week, the rest of you. And Jerry, wonderful to see you. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.